Hello. On behalf of the Trash Mountain Project staff, board of directors, and all of our partners around the world, I want to welcome you to Spoken 2021. Uh, this year, we took a little different route. Um, we've been walking through this second year of a lot of uncertainty, not knowing what we can, can't do, what's going to be closed, where we're at. And throughout this time, we've been watching our partners overseas experience tremendous growth. And the things that we've watched, as we were starting to plan for Spoken, uh, we began this idea of, well, maybe we go to location. Maybe we actually go somewhere. If we're allowed to leave the country, let's go. And that's where we're at. So I'm standing in a classroom in Santiago, Dominican Republic uh, with our partner, Kids with a Hope. And we wanted to bring this in its entirety to you from here. Um, that way we can share the stories in their reality and you can see them and we can talk about them. We can hear from our partners. Uh, Pablo and Elizabeth who run this ministry just do an amazing job. And this was the place that we came and we wanted to come to you with this story, not because of what we've done or even what our partners have done, but what God's done. I can talk about our mission statement. Most of you have heard it before. Um, it's that we serve kids living in trash dump communities, right? That's the really boiled down version of it. But if I was to look at why we do what we do, the boiled down version of what Jesus taught us, that is to share him with others. And to do that, it's to love him and to love his kids. So why the Dominican Republic? We could answer that question about location for Spoken with many of our sites that we go to. We could take you to the Philippines where we have five sites that have done great work for years now, great stories there. We could take you to Indonesia and show you the growth that has been happening there through the ministry. Or Honduras, our, our longest partner who has stabilized in a beautiful way over this last year. Or we could take you to Kenya, and we promoted Kenya earlier this year, and uh, a new home for single moms with children in an adjacent private school, and just an amazing ministry there in Dandora. But we chose the Dominican Republic for one primary reason. Here in the DR, we have been able to try so many new things and see if they succeed or fail. Our partners here, Pablo and Elizabeth, have been wonderful in working with them over the years and seeing what it is that's going to make an impact on this issue in trash dump communities. We've experimented with aquaponics here and found out that it is a good tool in trash dump communities, but it is not the single answer that we hoped it would be. We have a vocational school here where we're filming in right now, and we have great things that have happened with the tech school. We could show you ministry with children. We could talk about the possibility of upcoming elderly care, all kinds of things. But the Dominican Republic is the place where we have experimented many times and we find out what it is that works. Pablo and Elizabeth have been courageous in working with us in doing ministry, as our other partners have all throughout the world. The word resilience is a word that Brett brought up a moment ago. And with that word resilience, we could talk about all kinds of biblical examples. Let me give you one. Ruth. In the biblical account of Ruth, we find a young woman who has pledged allegiance to her mother-in-law. And it takes her places that she never realizes she's going to go. And yet, in that allegiance, she shows resilience. I could tell you about King David prior to being king. When Saul was still king and David's resilience in, in standing firm and not fighting back and, and pursuing the blessing that God had for him. Or we could take you to the book of Hebrews. It's full of people who have shown great resilience. People who served the Lord and walked faithfully and yet they didn't even know half the story. They didn't know the completed work of Jesus. But they hung in there. 
We see that same kind of resilience here in the Dominican Republic. We see it in Pablo and Elizabeth. We see it in the ministry that they do and the passion that they have for the people that they serve. And we see it in all of the countries where we serve. Estuve en el programa Niños con una Esperanza aproximadamente de 8 o 9 años. Actualmente doy clases en un colegio como maestra de primer grado. Mi madre fue una motivación fundamental en todo esto, igual que el programa Niños con una Esperanza y maestros de la escuela pública que veían ese don en mí, me motivaron y decidí ir a la universidad y estudiar esta carrera de educación. El aspecto económico fue un reto súper grande para poder llegar a ser docente. En mi familia no había muchos recursos, por ende tuve que buscar la opción de una beca estudiantil y encontré un lugar especializado para eso me hace sentir privilegiada. Ver la curiosidad que tienen los niños me hace querer eh, motivarlos, enseñarlos, el deseo de aprender y la emoción que sienten cuando algo nuevo se le enseña es algo satisfactorio. Sí. Mi esperanza para los niños que enseño es que puedan desenvolverse de manera óptima en la sociedad, que sepan elegir de forma correcta, analizando y reclamen sus derechos como niños, disfruten cada etapa de su crecimiento sanamente y en la universidad puedan estudiar lo que sienten en el corazón. Shelly and I would like to introduce you to Pablo and Elizabeth, they're the executive directors of Kids with a Hope here in the Dominican Republic. When we were here in July, uh, we heard about how much fear there is right now due to COVID and all of the problems that it's created. Around the world, we all understand what's happening with COVID, but what is unique about the kind of fear and the kind of problems in trash dump communities? Ok, mira, la situación que se ha estado viviendo en República Dominicana y en este sector, que son sectores muy pobres, ha sido algo bien difícil. La situación aquí en, en Cienfuegos y en sectores muy pobres ha sido muy difícil. Nadie esperaba esto, pero de la manera que esto afectó a, a estos sectores fue algo abrumador. No, nadie esperaba esto, pero ha sido shocking la manera en que ha afectado a estos sectores. Miles de familias que de repente comenzaron a, a, a faltarle los alimentos. Thousands of families suddenly found themselves without food. In, in the U.S., the struggle, we don't think of difficulty in terms of lack of food. Like, how lacking is that? Bueno, fue algo terrible porque la mayoría de personas perdieron sus empleos. It was terrible because the majority of people lost their jobs. Y al principio, pues quizá tenían algo guardado o se les facilitaban alimentos, pero al pasar ya un mes o dos meses, le faltó la, la comida en su, en su hogar. Y al principio, maybe they had a little something set aside or saved, and so they had a means of eating, but after a month or two months, then they didn't have food in their homes. El Estado Dominicano implementó un sistema para que le llegara alimento a alguna familia, pero muchísimas eh, quedaron sin, sin poder recibir nada. The Dominican government set up a system where some families received some assistance, but the majority of them didn't receive anything. What kind of impact has that made in terms of your neighborhood? Do you, do you have a different relationship with the neighborhood now because of that? Entiendo que sí, que la gente pudo ver con claridad que lo que nosotros recibimos lo entregamos y que además de eso estamos interesados en el bienestar de la comunidad y de la gente que aquí vive. I think so because people could see that what we were given, we gave out, and that we are, that we care about the, the wellness, the goodness of people in mm -hmm. this community. Pero además, eh, 
es, esta distribución de alimentos trajo, trajo paz, trajo alivio a muchas familias que por estar encerradas en las casas debido a la cuarentena, eh, no tenían la manera de buscar el alimento. But this also brought peace to the families that were stuck at home because of the quarantine who couldn't go out and find food. No, nosotros enfatizamos más en, en ancianos, en madres solteras. Y en los padres de los niños. Y en los padres de los niños. We focused most on the elderly. En madres solteras y en los padres de los niños. The single moms and the parents and the families of the kids in our program. We know that you've had to make a lot of adjustments with education in terms of um, opening up a computer lab and Wi-Fi access for students because public schools have been closed down. What are some of the things that you're hoping for the future in terms of education? Bueno, este año nosotros tenemos cuatro jóvenes becadas ya en la universidad y sin embargo vamos a poder duplicar para este año eh, la cantidad de jóvenes becadas para los estudios universitarios y eso nos llena de mucha alegría y mucha esperanza porque anhelamos seguir eh, introduciendo más estudiantes en la universidad que de otra manera no hubieran podido eh, entrar ni siquiera por el pago de lo, de la, de, del transporte. So we have four students that, are, that have scholarships to attend the university with us, and this year we're able to include four additional students. So we're basically doubling our numbers of college students, and our hope is in the future to be able to do more, but there are a lot of students who, because of lack of funding for transportation and books, can't go to college, but we're able to help them, and our hope is to be able to do it more. We want to thank you for all the work that you do here in, uh, in this community and the impact that you're making on the neighborhood. And I hope you know the blessing that you are to not only the people here, but to the story of what God is doing in the world in Trash Mountain Project. Nosotros también queremos agradecer inmensamente a Trash Mountain Project y su equipo. We also want to immensely thank Trash Mountain Project and its team. Igualmente a todos los colaboradores que se acercan para hacer sus aportes. And also for all of those that are collaborating and supporting. Estamos convencidos de que si no fuera por ese soporte, nosotros pudiéramos correr muy poco. We're very convinced that without that support, we could do very little. Uh, nosotros vivimos un momento muy, uh, muy emocionante, vamos a llamar así. Eh, nos íbamos algunas veces frustrados a nuestras casas. We live through very emotionally exhausting things. Sometimes we go really home really tired. Al ver tantas personas pasando hambre. Seeing so many people hungry. Y cuando nos comunicábamos en la oficina de Trans Mountain Pro y le explicábamos la situación. And when we'd communicate to the Trash Mountain office and explain the situation. Siempre nos dieron la mano. You always gave us your hand. Now that you've heard a little bit about Kids with a Hope and Pablo and Elizabeth, you really do, you really do get to hear their heart and uh, the kind of work they do. We want to share with you some more success stories. De los años que pasé aquí en el programa, yo estoy muy agradecida porque yo sentía que me ayudaba mucho, no tanto económicamente, sino personalmente. Porque a pesar de que ustedes también me ayudaron, Elizabeth y Pablo me han ayudado bastante también. Y me han dado muchas cosas. Ya después cuando llegó la universidad y esos tiempos, Elizabeth me, no me acordaba mucho, pero Elizabeth me contactó y me dijo, pero está aquí y tiene algo que decirte. Cuando me dijo que me iba a dar una beca fue lo mejor. Yo elegí estudiar medicina porque desde chiquita siempre he tenido ese potencial. Siempre me ha gustado así como que ver y ayudar a las personas y nunca le he tenido miedo ni a las agujas, ni a la sangre, ni nada de eso. Incluso una vez, cuando yo paraba mucho interna, me, yo misma me, me quería poner una intravenosa. Siempre como que he tenido esa conexión con la medicina. Porque yo sé que al final de todo eso es lo único que me va a quedar.
Many of you uh, have been following Christy's story for quite some time. And for those of you who don't know who she is, a, a quick snapshot is, you know, we've, we've known her for a little over 10 years and uh, she was born with an incurable uh, disease, uh, illness that um, really began taking her over around age 10, 11. And uh, when we had met her, it wasn't long after that, that she ended up in the hospital and was very ill. Uh, we were told chance of survival was pretty much gone. And so it was a real hard thing to go through. But a lot of you, uh, that's how so many of you are connected to her, is uh, joined us in prayer. And over a three-day period of nonstop prayer with thousands of people around the world, um, she got better overnight. Uh, her blood work changed. It wasn't as simple as... Uh, she just started feeling better. This was a, a true uh, miracle of God. And she kind of continues to be that, as you see. I mean, she's just developed into this incredible young woman who is just, she's driven. She can't wait to see what happens next in her life. And what we didn't have her talk about was uh, just because we had already had this emotional conversation uh, before uh, we had had her come in front of the camera for you, uh, was that uh, this last year has been very hard. And so to see um, where she's at now and to see that, that resilience, that word we've used a few times now, um, she is stuck in there. Uh, her father passed away um, in this last year. And then just a couple weeks ago, her grandmother passed away from her father's side. And so she has uh, really faced a lot of adversity and has stood up to it. And she um, isn't giving up and even has gone to the point of knowing that her father's gone so she needs to come up with her own support so she can continue school not so she can have fun or do other things which i hope she has as well but um, she's starting a small business with a friend of hers um, and it's a good plan and i just couldn't be couldn't be prouder of her and uh you know, she's, she's just been uh, like family to many of us. And so, uh, very incredible story. Um, and um, she is one great example of what we're seeing with so many of these kids here. Um, we just know her really well. We've been involved in her life. And um, she is a, a, one of four that we gave a college scholarship to a couple of years ago. The incredible part of that is those of you who know how those go and how difficult they are to succeed is that all four of those students are still in their programs and they're all actually getting really good grades. And so just before I sat down here, we actually signed uh, three new students to scholarships and they're now gonna start that process. And hopefully that number just continues to grow in the coming years and we see that same amount of success. Um, but to get those kids to that place, it's hard enough to get through high school in this community. Um, it is a very difficult place to live. It's an even harder place to succeed. And so when we're seeing that kind of success, it's encouraging to the younger kids. Um, but we've always seen this one small gap uh, in, I guess, the, the programming here. The one last thing we've wanted to do for the kids. Um, there's also the elderly care, which is coming in the future. But... Um, and that is the kids that are under the age of three, four years old. Uh, it's preschool, it's a nursery. Um, we've had great success with the kids that are in pre-K, um, but we've never been able to help those babies up through maybe age three. And so we're, um, we're moving towards that. That is a major project we're gonna be taking on this year. It has a lot to do with this event. Uh, and we're gonna be describing that more and more to you, but it's a much better thing for Elizabeth to explain that to you other than me. So we will move it to her and uh, just appreciate you guys' support and everything you're doing. Primeramente, cuando yo me acerqué a Niño con Esperanza, que yo estaba desesperada, yo me acerqué a Elizabeth y me dio una mano amiga. Pienso en otras madres, cómo están batallando eh, para poder lidiar con tres, cuatro niños sin padre o a veces de varios padres ausentes y cómo tienen que batallar también para ganarse la vida y poder buscar el sustento de esos niños. Y eso me llena de mucha angustia. Es muy importante 
que los niños puedan tener un lugar como este para venir a comer, por varias razones. Número uno, porque si no comieran aquí, muchos niños pasaran hambre, literalmente. Número dos, la comida que damos aquí, tratamos, nos empeñamos de que tenga los nutrientes necesarios y que tenga buen sabor, porque entendemos que quienes donan esos alimentos merecen respeto. Número tres, muchos padres no tienen suficiente dinero para su, todas las necesidades que tienen. Por lo tanto, el que los niños vengan a comer aquí les sirve de apoyo, de sostén, de alivio en sus gastos. Bueno, para mí ha sido algo incalculable porque ya que habemos muchas madres aquí en este sector que somos madres solteras, Tener niño con una esperanza nos dio, como a mí me lo dice su nombre, mucha esperanza, porque somos madres que venían no temprano, dejaban a nuestros hijos aquí en buenas manos, donde desayunan, comen, y que además tienen sala de tarea donde uno no tiene que pagar. O sea que uno se va tranquilo a laborar a su trabajo, ya que deja sus manos en manos de profesionales. Siempre hemos observado que muchas madres, muchas madres tienen que ir a trabajar, pero tienen niños pequeños y que han venido a preguntar, ¿tienen inscripción para niños de dos años? ¿Tienen inscripción para niños pequeños? Sin embargo, tenemos que responderle que no. Pero teníamos un problema y es que el piso, por tanto uso, después de 10 años de usarlo constantemente, comenzó a deteriorarse. Así que comenzamos a trabajar con la, la reparación del techo, del piso, la remodelación de todo esto. Fue todo un cambio total. Y mientras ocurría, entonces pensamos, pero esto puede prestarse perfectamente para ese gran sueño que hemos tenido, una guardería para niños de 1 a 5 años. Y eso nos emocionó. Yo confío en niños con una esperanza porque mis tres niños han pasado por aquí, se han desarrollado de la mejor forma posible, han recibido el mayor apoyo y han crecido de, de una forma con un desenvolvimiento increíble. Well, I promised we are uh, soon coming to the close of this video, but I also uh, just wanted to reiterate that, you know, this has all been shot on location. Uh, one thing is I do want to put a thank you out to John and Danny uh, who shot this whole thing. This has been a, a very fast paced uh, trip down here. And to do everything from here is just, it, it just, it feels different, but it's also a really amazing way to do this since we're not coming together in a large group coming to you from location is something that we really have wanted to do for a long time and we got to this time. So um, I wanted to thank them, but also thank you. Uh, the continued generosity you've shown Trash Mountain Project has made all these things happen. These stories that you've been hearing, that's, that's where this comes from. You know, we don't have the resources to do this without you. And we've continued to see growth even through years, this last couple of years of the pandemic. We're seeing our partners in the, in the Philippines and Kenya and, and uh, Honduras and uh, Indonesia, they're, they're all growing, just like what you saw here in the DR. Um, we're starting to implement you know, new forms of data collection and um, how can we better improve the programs that we're doing? And we're actually doing that as kind of a test in the Philippines right now and, and through the team over there who is just, it's amazing, we're in five locations, we have a staff over there and they're they're just, they're knocking it out. They're, they're teaching us how to do this so that hopefully next year we can implement those things in every place so that we can learn how to better, you know, conduct, I guess, the, the business that we do, the, the ministry that uh, we're involved in. And so none of those things can happen without you. And the reason we're doing uh, so much with our strategy and uh, the data collection is that way we can be the best stewards of the money that God's providing us. And that is something that we take very seriously And, and we don't want to ever forget that. And we don't want to ever um, keep doing something that isn't working. So we want to learn what is it best for each specific location. And we have shared 
quite a few uh, stories with you here from the DR, um, but we've also seen these great successes um, over the past year. And one specific I had to share with you is just the, what's happened in Indonesia. Um, they've expanded to a fifth location over there during this past year. And that was made possible um, by one of our church partners and by um, you here at Spoken last year and just people that got involved with us uh, throughout the time that we've been working with them. And so they've seen this large pop in what they're doing and they're taking on a bunch of more kids in their program. It's, it's, it's really an incredible thing to watch when so much of the world is slowed down. It's like they've sped up. And so it's, it's, uh, it's fun to watch. It's fun to see that kind of thing happen. And um, we're also kind of launching into this program. A lot of you have heard us talk about Kenya over the last year. Um, we have an incredible story unfolding over there right now. And that's really what we're gonna be covering over this next year leading up to Spoken where we hope to see you in person uh, and to be able to present that to you because you're talking about 150 um, single moms and their kids being housed that were living in trash or at least completely deplorable conditions um, prior to that and a private school adjacent to that uh, facility for the kids. And so that alone is just gonna be an incredible thing we can watch God unfold in front of us next year. Um, um, but for us, we wanted to really focus this spoken on two things. Um, it's kind of a, it's a two part ask really, to be honest with you. And it's an aggressive ask. Uh, you know, last year we raised around $280,000, uh, which was, uh, kind of beyond what we thought would happen uh, when we did the uh, boxes and mailer and couldn't meet in person, but you guys responded. And this year, we're gonna be even a little more aggressive. Uh, and our goal is $330,000. I know that's a large number, but I really do think we can do it. And the way that breaks down is twofold. Uh, the first two thirds of that money basically go and they're dispersed between all of our countries. It's, it's for us to really meet our budgetary need for the next year. And the second third, is that I think we just need to knock out the nursery you heard about. That's really what we're aiming at. We wanna be able to do both of those things. And if we can, that means we can house about 25 babies and young kids here at Kids With A Hope. And it's something we need to do. So that's the goal that we're aiming for. Um, I know we're not in person, so that can create uh, questions. So if you have any questions, if you wanna contact us, um, there's many ways to do that. You can go to our website. Uh, you can call our office, send a carrier pigeon, whatever it is you need to do to talk to us. We would love to answer your questions. Um, in addition to that, um, we're going to be doing it similar to how we did it last year. So it's going to go through the end of the calendar year. We're going to have a tracker on our website so you can check and see how things are going, where we're at towards our goal. And uh, we're going to keep that updated on a very regular basis. Finally, I can't say thank you enough uh, for our staff, for our board, for all of our partners. You hear Pablo and Elizabeth, I wish you could hear them behind the scenes with us. Um, your generosity is, it keeps them going. They get excited. They know that there are all these people in the United States and around the world that support them and, uh, and that's priceless to them. And so I wanna thank you again from the bottom of my heart and also hopefully we can see each other in person next year at a large event and we can celebrate together. 